All right, today I want to answer one of those questions that come up in almost every live stream. Which sword should I buy? Now, I've reviewed, I don't even know how many at this point, and it can be a little difficult to navigate all of that. Also, considering just how much stuff there is on the reproduction market. So I'm going to give you some recommendations, just gather it all into one. And I'm going to start in, when, with ancient times and then go to the middle ages and then Renaissance and beyond. And then I'm also gonna include non-European swords, fantasy and tactical swords. So this is probably gonna be very long, so I might have to chop it up into several parts. So let's go right ahead. We're gonna do budget, mid-range, and high-end. So, first off, ancient times. So anything up to the fall of the Roman Empire. So when it comes to quality at a budget price, Devil's Edge comes to mind. I reviewed the Xiphos, which was surprisingly good for the price, with the exception of the heat treatment. It was too soft, and the edge deformed during the tests. You could argue not a big deal considering that the originals were iron and even softer, arguably, but even so, I mean, come on, 140 US dollars, which is 180 Canadian, that is really cheap for a reproduction sword. And overall, it was very well made. The fit and finish was really good. They come with an extremely sharp edge. And I also like the shape of the grip overall, handles really well. You know, great weight and balance, etc. And then we have the Devil's Edge Murmillo Gladius, which I personally have not handled and tested, but it's on sale right now for $100. That is crazy cheap. And looking at the pictures, this seems like it's about the quality that I've come to expect. Seems very well made. So if we look at the, the shape of the handle there, I quite like that. And uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest looking at that one. Speaking of the Roman Gladius, we have the Pompeii Gladius made by Windless Steel Crafts. And with Windless, I've had mixed experiences, mostly good, with a few exceptions, but generally good quality for the price. Uh, this one here, I have not handled personally, but the pictures suggest that it's well shaped. Uh, it has an accurate weight. It's slightly longer than the typical overall length of a Pompeii Gladius at five centimeters or two inches above, which is important to note because a number of Gladius reproductions on the market are just too large and heavy and don't really represent this type of sword very well. This, from what I can see, seems to. Imagine this was the original size. Even though I haven't reviewed this one, if I was looking for a Gladius right now in this price range, I would definitely consider that one. As far as bronze swords are concerned, I generally like to recommend Neil Burridge, although I'm not entirely sure if he's still active, considering that this was apparently not updated since before spring 2016, and I haven't heard anything from him in a while. So if he's still active, I would definitely say contact him and see if he gets back to you. If so, then the budget Canaanite sickle sword falls within the upper budget range. And he also offered a bear blades that you have to hilt yourself and sharpen and polish for less. Here's the Ewart Park sword, which I've shown a number of times. This is mid range. So the finished blade is 220 pounds. Uh, fully finished with hilt and everything like this is 330 pounds or 450 US dollars and 570 Canadian. One step up is Manning Imperial. They also make a Canaanite sword. This one within Australia goes for 544 Australian dollars. And then outside, if you're ordering from elsewhere without tax, it's 380 US dollars and 485 Canadian. Personally, I haven't had anything from Manning Imperial yet, but I've heard nothing but good about them. And also, just from the pictures, you can see that this is a high level of craftsmanship, a lot of attention to detail. Generally, they offer a very high level of historical accuracy with their reproductions, among the highest I've seen. Uh, this Mycenaean sword here, we're entering the high-end range. So this is uh, 740 US dollars or 950 Canadian. And they also have the most accurate Copus replica I've seen. And of course, that level of quality doesn't come cheap. 
So I'm just waiting for someone in the comments to be like, what is this? I can buy three Mossberg 500 shotguns and a thousand shells for the same price or an AR-15 made by Daniel Defense. Um, yeah, swords are expensive. It is what it is. Also in the high-end price range, we have the Albion Gladi. It's not Gladiuses, singular Gladius, plural Gladi. And uh, these cost either 780 or 880 US dollars, which is 980 or 1120 Canadian. Now, I haven't had these in particular, but I used to own a first generation Spatha made by Albion, which is great. I still kind of miss that one. That was a fantastic cutter, really well made overall, and I mean, standard Albion quality that you can expect. Basically, so these are very easy to recommend even without having handled them. From the same time as the Romans, we have the Hanzian. This is LK Chin's Flying Phoenix, which I've got right here, reviewed not too long ago. And this is still my favorite one among the ones that they sent me. I also really like the Chu Jian. And so far, LK Chen has been very good quality with a few exceptions, but uh, generally most of them I very much liked. It's so crazy just how light it is. I mean, I've handled some light swords in my life, but this is, um, this is an absolute featherweight. Cuts very well, comes with really sharp edge, a nice blade geometry, and uh, overall has kind of a nice, utilitarian look to it. Also mid-range we've got this Falx made by Christian Yamandi. This is 430 euros, 520 US dollars and 665 Canadian. This one is great. Very well made, nice polish on it, solid construction. You can hammer armor with it uh, and do cutting and uh, I mean how many properly made Falkis can you find? This is, um, yeah, easy to recommend. Not only because there isn't much else on the market that's well made, but also because this is particularly well made. If your bank account is just groaning, which is understandable after 2020, here's something really affordable. So this is on sale at Call of Athena right now for 85 US dollars or 108 Canadian. This is the uh, two-handed chopper made after a depiction in the Morgan Bible made by Windless Steelcrafts. This I also haven't handled personally. And um, what I don't like about this one is the handle shape. It's very boxy. So you do have to keep some limitations in mind. This is this would probably make for a great project blade. I would definitely grind this and just bevel the corners to make it way more comfortable as it is. It just wouldn't be great. However, 1065 high carbon steel, full tang, riveted handle scales. This is one of those durable choppers that you can throw all kinds of abuse at and it's gonna be fine. If you wanted something nicer that is also based on the same depiction, you could always go for, if it would load, there we go, for the Deltin version. Now, I don't have any direct experience with Deltin. I know more about what to expect from Windless. This one here looks nicer if you compare that. This is properly rounded off, not as boxy as the other one. But of course, this costs substantially more. For a Viking sword, here's a good budget option from Ronin. This is the European sword number eight. And I have reviewed this Viking sword in uh, 2015, I think. This has performed very well. Now, I'm personally not the biggest fan of the grip wrap, but I very much take it anytime over a lot of the grips I've seen, which just have the rough stitching. On one side, this is textured and uh, this is really just my spoiled ass, you know, being used to Albion and whatever, this is perfectly fine. And especially in the price range, this is great. 1075 high carbon steel, you know, good quality steel uh, and it's full tank construction. I mean, these are all full, th full tank construction. Uh, these are all functional, quote unquote, battle, battle ready. And uh, yeah, this one worked quite well, so no problem with recommending that. They have other models as well. I have no reason to believe that they are any less of lesser quality than this one, 
so you can just look around. Also budget range, we've got the Hanwei Tinker 9th century Viking sword. I've handled this one and I've reviewed the Hanwei Tinker longsword. Now, personally, I haven't had any issues at all with the longsword, but some people have had issues with them. I mean, with the Hanwei Tinker longswords in particular, a few people have broken them. Sparring, of course, is harder use you know, with the blunt ones than backyard cutting. So for cutting, I don't really foresee any issues here. Just something to, to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, I very much like the handling of this. Uh, one thing to point out is that the handle is very skinny, you know, very thin. Now, personally, I like that in this case because it's quite a bit wider than it's, than it's thick, but it's not out of proportion. So it's still enough to fill the palm, but do keep in mind if you have larger hands, this might bother you a little bit. But otherwise, definitely well-made sort of 5160 hard carbon steel. So that is uh, high quality spring steel. Uh, it's gonna be durable generally. I say generally because as I said, some people have had issues with the longsword, but uh, yeah, when I handled this, I very much liked how it felt. In the mid-range, I'd suggest looking at the Albion Squireline Viking Sword. Uh, this one I haven't owned, but I think I've tested enough Albion Swords at this point to have sort of an idea of the quality, you know, kind of. Uh, and I've owned one of the Squireline Swords, I'll get to that later. And uh, so I don't think you can go wrong with this. Uh, keep in mind, this is unsharpened. So you have to request sharpening, which costs a little extra. The high-end option there is the Albion Berserker. This one I've reviewed, 1200 US dollars, 1530 Canadian, crazy thing. <laughs> I've put it through all kinds of abuse to really stress the blade and see where it goes. And it held up very well. I managed to bend it a little bit, but that's all. Powerful cutter and also a fairly unusual Viking sword. It's a Norwegian single-edged sword. You know, most of them are double-edged, of course. So pretty interesting sword, handles very well. Uh, definitely lighter than you would expect looking at it. And yeah, it's a beast. If you have a lot of dough to throw around, you can always salivate over these swords here at temple.net, made by Patrick Barda super crazy high end, a beautiful craftsmanship. The only problem is the waiting list is very long. Uh, back in 2016, I actually went on his waiting list for a Celtic sword. And at that time he told me probably three years and I still haven't heard from him. So yeah, he has a very long backlog, is highly sought after and yeah, I mean, if you can spare that much money, you, could, you probably also can spare the patience. I don't know. 